a program. The uh, Republicans are up to their old tricks, trying to uh, shovel more and more money to the morbidly rich. But Senator Sanders is on it. Senator Bernie Sanders on the line with us. He's the chair of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, the HELP Committee, Sanders.Senate.gov. Send Sanders on Twitter or Bernie Sanders on Twitter. Senator, welcome back. Uh, you, you guys are staying busy there. We are very busy. We have a very aggressive agenda. And Tom, uh, at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, uh, where the very rich are getting richer, we're trying to do what we can to protect the middle class and working families of our country. So it's a very aggressive agenda. So I understand the Republicans are, are pushing a, a, another tax cut for billionaires, this uh, in, the, in the guise of an estate tax cut. And, right. uh, and no, you have the guys. An that's that's that. what it is. What they want to do is they want to hear these guys who say, you know what, we can't afford to feed our children. We can't afford to raise the minimum wage. We can't afford to build affordable housing. But you know what we can't afford to do? We can afford to give a trillion dollars in tax breaks to the very, very wealthiest families in this country to the top one-tenth of one percent by repealing the estate tax completely. The estate tax only applies to the very, very, very rich. They want to get rid of it. It is uh, really tells you everything you need to know uh, about where Republicans are coming from. Yeah, I call them the morbidly rich. <laughs> I, I, they really are. They're you know, obscenely rich, and this is an issue we have to deal with. So what we have proposed instead of repealing the estate tax, is to make it more progressive. Uh, look, uh, as I think most listeners know, there has been in the last many decades a massive transfer of wealth in this country. But that massive transfer has gone from the working class of this country to the top 1%. And that's why we have more income and wealth inequality than we've ever had before. So what we want to do is have a progressive tax system including a progressive estate tax system that demands that the wealthy stop paying their fair share of taxes so we could fund the programs that we desperately need in this country. Do you see any changes coming down the road on income taxes in general? I mean, I, Americans just paid their taxes this week, and uh, particularly people in, in the, the upper middle class seem to be really taking it on the you know, the doctors, lawyers class, the people making, you know, basically over $80,000 a year, under a million a year, um, are, are paying, in some cases, up to half their income, depending on the state they live in, between federal and state taxes. And, and you've got billionaires who are, you know, Donald Trump paid nothing in taxes or $750 a year for 20 years. You've got billionaires well, that, who are paying right, an average of 3%. You know, what we have is, and, you know, people like Warren Buffett have made this point. Uh, that we have an effective tax rate, i.e. what people really pay based on their income, which is lower for billionaires than it is for working class people. So working class people will pay uh, an income tax. They pay state taxes. They pay taxes at the gas pump. They pay Social Security taxes. And you add all of that up, the average uh, nurse or truck driver ends up paying a higher effective tax rate than a billionaire who was able to, uh, in many ways, with their accountants and lawyers, avoid uh, paying their taxes. So couldn't, is, isn't this an issue that should resonate with Republican voters as well as Democratic voters, that the, that well, the Republican Tom, tax cuts have gone too far? It may very well. I, I think if you do a poll today and you say, do you think we should demand that the wealthy, the wealthiest people in this country stop paying their fair share of taxes. And it's not just the rich, it's, it's large corporations as well. The answer is that Republicans and Democrats will say yes. But here in the Congress, uh, there is a bubble where these billionaires and corporate interests have enormous numbers of lobbyists who are doing everything they can to protect uh, the rich and the powerful, among other things, uh, to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. But it's not just taxation that we're working on right now. Uh, we have not raised the federal minimum wage. Congress has not acted since 2008. And you've got many, many states in the union where the minimum wage still remains seven and a quarter an hour. Now, my view uh, is that uh, we've got to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, which, uh, to my mind, is, is at least $17 uh, an hour. So that's an issue 
that we are working on on our committee. The other issue uh, that impacts working class people is that because workers are falling further and further behind, wages are not keeping up with inflation. We've lost many good paying jobs replaced by low paying service industry jobs. Workers now want to organize. And we're seeing that all over this country. Uh, workers in blue collar jobs, white collar jobs, just you may be, uh, have heard at Rutgers University, there was a major strike among adjunct faculty uh, and, and graduate students uh, who are really being exploited. They won a tremendous victory in California. Uh, university workers went out on strike. They won a big victory. Uh, you're seeing blue, blue collar workers also out on strike. Uh, so what we want to do is make it easier for workers to join in unions uh, and that and take on the Starbucks, the leadership of Starbucks, et cetera, who are doing everything they can to try to make it harder for workers to join unions. There's a massive union busting effort going on in this country right now, and that has to be confronted. And and corporation, I, I know you had Sh Howard Schultz <clears throat> before your committee a, a week or so ago, if I recall correctly. Yes. Um, yes. And these corporations, they're spending uh, millions and millions in, 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 argue, you know, in aggregate, billions of dollars a year on union busting, and it's a tax-deductible expense. Right. Do I have that right. right? You do. It is. That's a business expense, breaking unions. Uh, so what we have got to do is, is confront these union buses. And the importance of taking on Starbucks is not only as important as with Starbucks, where they have some 300 shops that have voted to form a union and without one union contract, but it becomes symbolic of the whole effort of whether or not we can build a strong trade union movement. Because if Starbucks can get away with breaking unions, other corporations will do the same. So they are acting, in my view, illegally. Uh, the labor law is very clear what you can and cannot do. They are acting illegally. We've got to deal with that, hold them accountable. And second of all, we've got to strengthen labor law uh, in this country, and we're working on that as well. Uh, some of the other issues uh, where we have made some progress, I'm happy to tell you, is a number of months ago we introduced uh, an amendment to make sure that rail workers were able to get paid sick leave. Uh, at that point, they had zero. Uh, but I'm happy to tell you that company after company is responding to their unions and public pressure, uh, and I think you're going to have, within a short period of time, virtually all rail workers will have a more or less seven paid sick days, which uh, certainly is not a radical idea, but I'm glad to see that uh, we have made progress on that. Uh, the other area, Tom, that we are working hard on uh, is uh, prescription drugs. Uh, we had a hearing with the uh, leadership of Moderna uh, uh, last month, uh, and we're going to continue our efforts to end the absurdity of Americans paying by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. I mean, you got cancer drugs out there that cost people $100,000, $150,000 a year. Uh, and in fact, it costs maybe just a, a very small amount for these companies to actually manufacture these drugs. Yeah. So we've got to lower the cost of the prescription drugs and make sure that people can afford the medicine uh, that they that is life saving for many of them. Senator, one of the one of the many things that I learned from from you being on this program uh, those those eleven or so years that you were every week um, was the importance of political strategy and 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 how how things actually get done in politics in America today. What's your best advice for people who are listening right now who want to have an impact? on how things get done, who want to help and support your efforts, for example, and, and in general, progressive efforts in Congress and in their states. Uh, what's, what's the number one or the, 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 what are the top pressure points? What should people be doing now? Well, I mean, every person has a different set of priorities and they work in different places, they go to school in different places, but stand up and be counted. Mm -hmm. and, and let me just give you one example, Tom, of, of you know, for years, you and I have discussed this years back, uh, the high cost of the prescription drugs. Well, it just so happened that last month the major, and I'm going to have them before our committee, but the major insulin producers, Eli Lilly, Sanofi, other major drug companies, they announced a 70% reduction in the cost of insulin. 70%. They know how that happened? How did that happen? It happened because people all over this country including you know, people in the diabetes community, stood up and fought back. So at the end of the day, 
the way real change takes place is through grassroots activism. If you stand up and say, how come we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all, to, for all people, and we spend twice as much per capita on a totally dysfunctional, dis, uh, absurd system? Start talking about this issue. Mobilize people around this issue. Uh, stand with workers who are out on strike. Stand with students who want to have their uh, schools disinvest from fossil fuel companies. And sometimes you may not have immediate results, but by building and creating public consciousness on this or that issue, you can surely bring about change. And we've seen that time and time again. Senator, you are uh, an American hero and uh, certainly one of mine. Senator Bernie Sanders, thank you so much for dropping by today. Thank you very much, Tom. Take it, care. Bye-bye. It Bye -bye. is an honor. Thank you. We'll be right back. It's 17 minutes past the hour here on the Tom Hartman program. Uh, Mitch McConnell, has he achieved his goal of destroying the Senate? <laughs> and uh, Republicans are shielding gun firm, uh, firms, gun, gun manufacturers, rather than children. I'll tell you about that, too. Stay, stay tuned. We'll be right back.